All right, let's talk about how, some more things about how you actually design a chip. Today's chips have millions of gates. Remember, billions of transistors, but a gate is made up of several of those transistor switches in one. They have, a, they have millions of gates. And to design a chip means I have a task to figure out how to make my chip do what I want it to do. So if I want a cell phone ringer, I want a cell phone ringer. I don't want a microwave oven chip. I don't want something that goes in my car. I want it to be a specific cell phone ringer. So my job as a design engineer is to figure out how to make that chip do exactly what I want it to do. That's chip design. Without automation, this would be literally impossible. We used to be able to design things on a piece of paper, you know, draw a few little switches and then say, oh, if this one turns on and that one turns off, this one turns on, that one's off, that's exactly what I want. Well, when you've got a billion of them, obviously you can't do that um, by hand. So we have to automate them. We have to call on computers and say, dear computer, please help me. I've got a billion transistors on my hands that I've got to figure out how to make them do something important for me. So enter our industry, EDA, Electronic Design Automation. Again, we are automating using computers. We're going to tell the computers to help us the design of the electronics, how to figure out how to make those billion switches create some product that I really want. So how does EDA help? This is the simplest way that I tell people what EDA is all about. We make software that's used to design chips. And when I say software, what I mean, software is also known as a computer program. And a computer program is something that is just a set of commands. You're telling the computer to do things. Computer, do this. Computer, do that. Computer, do this. Computer, do, do that. When you put that all together, that's a computer program. And that's also known as software. In EDA, we call that a tool. So a whole bunch of computer commands is what we would call an EDA tool. These commands are going to help you design your chip because it's going to tell the computer, figure out what this switch is doing, figure out how to connect that switch, tell the switch, do that, do this, do this, do this, so that you end up with exactly what you want out of that computer chip, and that's a tool. And again, it's just software. So this is a really nice generic way of telling people what is EDA? What, what does Karen do for a living? Well, we make software that's used to design computer chips. If you saw the earlier video where I talked about IP intellectual property, here's a, here's a funny story. So I was on an airplane, and uh, we were getting ready to take off, and there was a guy sitting next to me, and I had work to do. I had strategic planning to do. If you ever get a chance to do strategic planning, it makes you feel like you're really important. <laughs> Mostly it's like, what am I going to do this year? But anyway, so I had to do strategic planning. So there's a guy sitting next to me, he starts talking. He wants to be friendly. I think, okay, fine. I'll talk to him, I'll be nice, and then I'll go back to work. And he said, oh, what do you do? And I said, oh, I work for a company here in the area. I said, what do you do? And he said, well, my company makes software that's used to design chips. And I went, oh my god, I closed my computer. It turned out he worked for a direct competitor, and he was sitting right next to me. And so my strategic planning had to happen some other day. But it was neat to know that all of us in our industry say, this is what we do. We make software used to design computer chips. So in order to do this, we go through a long series of steps. And we call this a design flow. That would be step by step what it takes to design a chip. So what exactly is a design flow? Again, the steps you take to design a chip. And let me show you, this is sort of a general purpose flow. I'm not going to explain all these steps. Don't get scared. Don't, don't, don't go watch uh, you know, Annoying Orange on YouTube. No, no, stay with me. You, you actually go through all of these different processes in order to come out with your chip design. And all along the way here for each step, there will be a specific EDA tool or collection of tools that you'll use in order to perform each function. Let me um, group these into a little more general purpose uh, areas for you to understand better. So this whole area that you start with we call it design implementation. How are you going to implement this design? How are you going to make it do what it's supposed to do? That's also known as logic design. So um, if you're in our industry and you hear design implementation and logic design, they're, they're the same thing. But it's all these first steps that you go. How am I going to implement my cell phone ringer, for instance, in all of these different switches? The area over here of the design flow uh, is what we call verification. You need to make sure this darn thing is going to work right. 
step at a time, over and over and over. Make sure it works. Make sure the transistors are switching on and off at the right time and that they're, they're functioning properly. Because you don't want to get to the point where you've manufactured those chips and those fancy wafers that I was showing earlier and realize, oops, I, I did something wrong. So verification is a crucial part of this whole design process, this whole design flow. Interestingly enough, most people say that the design part takes maybe 30% of the overall time to create a chip, to, to create the chip design, and verification can be up to 70% of that time. You're in there looking for all those little bugs, everything that could be um, misthought, misconnected, misinterpreted. Verify, verify, verify. It's an extremely important part of the overall design flow. Then down below, all of these steps we call design implementation as well, only they're the physical design implementation. Logical is what does it do, how does it function, and physical is how are those little tiny transistors connected to each other, where are they located on the chip. It's all the physical um, implementation of the chip, the pieces themselves, rather than the ideas and the thoughts of what it's supposed to do. So in my cell phone ringer example, what the logic is, the implementation of the design, the logic is I want a cell phone ringer. And down here in the physical design, it's I want this switch connected to that switch, connected to this switch, connected to that switch in order to make my cell phone ringer. So that kind of puts in context these major areas of the whole design flow, the whole design process.